Thank you, Reverend Julie. And a special uh, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, wonderful Guyanese, welcome to everybody. And how you greet, I don't know how you greet uh, these days. Hola, hello. And so we say welcome to everyone from the Demarai Secure District and the Burmese District as we engage in the second session of these equipping sessions. And it's been impacting, it's been blessing us. I am excited. I have actually seen how this has been revolutionizing the heart and mind of individuals right across our districts. As a matter of fact, for those of us who have in, uh, thought about getting it started and getting it done, we are now having the practical tools and the, the real uh, uh, meat to the skeleton we always had. We always wanted to do uh, mentorship, but now we're having this. And so tonight, we're doing the second part of a uh, equipping session. The first part was done by Reverend Nicola Reed and Minister Liven, which was on Tuesday, uh, covering session two, well, the session, second session by our general superintendent. Uh, and she was, I was in that, Carla, Dr. Carla Sundberg challenged my heart. I don't know about you, but I was challenged, really challenged and, uh, I'm happy that we are now taking it to our leaders across the district. Let me just pause this moment to, uh, to ask uh, our coordinator, Reverend Julie, to remind us who are the persons that are supposed to be in these sessions. Reverend Julie. Yes, those who are invited to this phase two are the leadership of the churches. So it would be the pastors of each church in our district, the NYI, uh, president, the NMI president, SDMI president, uh, in, uh, Nazarene NMI. ministry uh, coordinator, evangelism coordinator, the ministry leaders of the church. So if there's another ministry that might uh, be a big part of your local church congregation, uh, then that leader would be here as well, and the pastor. And then when you were, uh, you would be equipped so that then you can bring this to your churches and um, give these same sessions to the rest of the leaders in your congregation. Thank you so much, Reverend uh, Julie, for reminding us. And those of us who are here from your local churches, please remind it, there are those who are, who need to be here that they need to connect. We do uh, recognize that there have been some who are having significant problem with their connections and their connectivity. And uh, that's a challenge we have, especially in Burbies and I know in Demerara. And we're happy that each and every one of you um, who are here, in some cases, some of you are doubling up. And so let me ask Sarah and Julie again to talk about quickly those who are there, maybe behind a single screen, um, how you are to indicate um, in the Zoom. So Julie, go ahead, please, for another instruction. Yes. So those who are just joining, please rename yourself. If you haven't already, you might see when you click on participants, you can find your name and then go to more. And then you can rename yourself. And the what we are doing is putting a B in front of our name for Burbese, DE in front of your name if you're Demerara's Equivo District. And then if you are more than one person, so just what Reverend Tony was saying, um, put two or three or four, however many people are with you, please put the number after your name or in your name. That way we can, uh, when we do small breakout groups, we will account for those people so that everyone gets a chance to talk. We will only have a short amount of time and we want everyone to participate. We want this to be very hands-on. And so we are making groups of seven or eight, depending on how many people we have tonight. Um, and so that number indication for those who have more, if you are just yourself, don't worry about it. Um, I will count you just as one. But if there's more than one person, please put the number so we can uh, create those breakout groups and make this a very intentional uh, time together. Thank you, Reverend Julie. And uh, I see we have followed those instructions. 
is it okay for us to put it behind the DE or BE in behind or you want it in front, Sister Julie? It would be easier to do it in front. Um, that way we can, we're trying to also um, do it by, by groups, by districts. So um, I will find it either way, but it, especially the longer names, um, it's much easier to find it when it's in the front. So we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Those are our home house matters. It's time for us to pray and get right into what we are here for tonight because I know there's so much to learn and so much to um, enjoy. And so I'm going to ask um, someone from the Burbies district in particular to lead us in a word of prayer before we introduce our presenter tonight. And uh, so I'm going to ask uh, someone from the Olivet Church, if you're there, um, would you please go ahead and, and pray for a session tonight that God would indeed move as we, as we allow him to teach us through the manservant and the, the teacher today. Would you go ahead from Olivet? Would you please pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence this afternoon. Lord, as we are about to engage in our second session, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would take control and move in a mighty way, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for our Reverend Nagamutu, God, as he presents, I pray, God, that your anointing will be upon his life. God, the words that come out of his mouth, Lord, will be impactful to us, Lord Jesus, that we can be able to put these things into practice, God. Lord, we come against every distraction in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that our internet will function well, God, so that we can participate fully in this session, God. We pray, God, that you will have your way. Take absolute control. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen and praise the Lord. Our presenter is no stranger to the Burbies district, but he may be new and fresh to some of us from the Demerara side. So our district office secretary, uh, Ms. Shalini Chan, will do the introductions. Over to you, Ms. Chan, Mrs. Chan. Hi, Demerara. Hi, Burbies. It's good to be here tonight. And my task is to introduce our speaker. He is um, our district secretary. He also served as um, the evangelism coordinator of the Guyana Barbies district. He is a pastor currently serving in two churches, two vibrant churches, the Lancaster and Bloomfield Church of the Nazarene. In other profession, he serves as a field foreman to the Guyana Sugar Corporation. He has been working there for over 26 years. He has two lovely daughters who are all grown up now, a little granddaughter, and he's a husband to Minister Indi Nagamutu, who serves alongside him in ministry. He has been recently tasked with being my mentor as well. Um, allow me to introduce a humble, God-fearing, caring, and energetic man of God to, to you tonight. He is Reverend Abraham Nagamutu. Over to you, Rev. Thank you, Ms. Shalini, for such warm introduction. Thank you, Reverend Otar. I believe that the greatest strategy in any organization is the inability to inspire new leaders. The Church of the Nazarene, with whom we are partnering with, is not only an organization, but an organism. An organism is defined as something that is alive. Its continuity and its survival is heavily dependent on it being alive today. Similarly, it is with the church. Its continuity 
its furtherance, its mission must be impacted by new leaders and uh, with new leaders. Whether you are a pastor tonight or a leader, it is pivotal that at this time in this new dispensation that all of us understand that the task ahead is great and challenging. But there is someone who is available and can provide the strength, can provide the resources to help with the continuity of this great mission he has given to us. This evening, we will take some time, we will spend the, the rest of the moment looking at this powerful topic, biblical transformation. I'd like to give you an overview as to how we will proceed. And uh, we are going to be dealing with the divine mentors securing your daily devotions, consolidation, and change. The divine mentor. It is absolutely important that everyone must connect with the divine mentors. It will help you to find strength. It will help you in difficult times. It will help you uh, when difficult tests comes. God, the Bible declares, he is the one who walked with both uh, the heroes and the fools of the Bible. And uh, you must think like God if we are going to proceed in this great thing that is before us, that we must think like God so that we can respond like him. And uh, in doing so, brothers and sisters, it will help to avoid mistakes which avoid long-term misery. To learn from biblical mentors, we need to create space in our lives. Space is important. Uh, because we need to connect with God. There must be a time, if we were to do that, to be with God. And this is called sacred space. It is at this place, and it is at this time, when you must have a quiet time with the Lord. It is this time that we learn from It is this time that during all the traffic that goes around us, that can be a distraction, that we need to come to this sacred place and uh, find, find quiet, peaceful rest where we can reflect on who God is. Uh, you need to come to him to find strength, to come carry out uh, your daily task. Because my friends, this is an enormous task. And uh, we, we, can't, we can't just rely on ourselves. We must rely on the Holy Spirit who will help us. There's a quote I like to read for you and uh, 
Shalini can pull it up for me. It says, will we choose to spend quiet, reflective time alone with the Lord? Or will we allow the pressures of work to work us into a fuzzle? Will we build a sacred enclosure around our roots? Or will we allow frenzy foot traffic to root our spiritual roots and send us crashing to the earth? That's a question for everyone. Those are questions for every one of us uh, this evening. And I'm sure all of us will understand that we need to put this time and space together in order to do what the Lord has called us to do. I want you to join me as we watch this little video. Um, join me as we, we have a look at it tonight, connecting with God. While Micheline is working on that. Time alone with God is important. And uh, while we're trying to get that um, recording available, that video, I wish to let you know, everyone tonight, that your best is what God needs. He needs your time. He needs everything from you. And uh, one, can only, one can only find that at the foot of Jesus. Looks like we're having some difficulties as well. Hope we can have that. Yes, Rev, we're having some difficulty. I'm not seeing an option to share the video. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. We'll have that sometime later on. Um, what I'd like to talk about tonight as well is how to listen to God's voice. Wisdom is important and can only come from God. In 1 Kings, Solomon prayed for wisdom. He prayed for wisdom to lead because Solomon knew that leadership is an enormous responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mentoring is an enormous yeah. responsibility. So, Solomon prayed for wisdom. It will help us to be humble. Wisdom will help us to be humble. It will help us to be malleable. It will help us to be correctable. It will help us to be changeable and transformable so that you and I can reflect the image of God every single day. The truth is, my friends, only you can keep yourself healthy uh, by feeding yourself. And no one can do it for you. No one will do it for you. 
Only you can do that. When you miss your devotion, which is an important factor in your Christian walk, in this whole sphere of discipleship and the mentorship, your devotion is important. Someone says, when you miss your devotion one day, you notice. When you miss them two days, your spouse and kids notice. And when you miss them three days, the world notices. So it's only through devotion that we have this precious time with God and uh, yourself. Daily devotions are important for any mentor, any person who is willing to serve the Lord must have this time put aside because spending interrupted time with God certainly can be of great benefit. Spending time in his word will release a fountain, fountain of refreshment for your life. It is Psalms David who says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And so uh, as, we, as we reflect on our daily devotion time, it's important for any mentor, any one of us, any leader, that we reflect and uh, we spend quality devotional time with our Lord and Savior. In your daily devotion, as you read and pray, consider this acronym. S-O-A scripture observation application and prayer S -O -A -P. when this is done when S-O-A-P scripture, observation, application and prayer, when it is done on a daily basis the divine will speak to you day after day. He will lead you into a deeper walk with Jesus our Lord. I like to read a quote from Reverend Dr. Sar Carla Sandberg. She says, and she was speaking on divine mentorship, and she says, and I quote her, I began doing this more than 10 years now. I was teaching many new believers. I knew that I had to be a good example for them. And she says, I began posting my journal entries on the church website because we are all following the same reading plan. It is a plan that we're going to look at as we look at our devotional time and, and how we do our devotion. She says this, she says a few years later, I became district superintendent and thought that I didn't have to be accountable in that way anymore. That, that the Lord challenged me and said to me, why I thought as DS didn't need to be, a DS didn't need to be accountable. And then she said she created she began a block um, that is entitled Reflecting the Image. And uh, that block is available. The website is available for any one of us, any one of you uh, tonight who are willing to visit. Um, you will have that available to you um, so that you can check out what she's done. And uh, she's given us a pattern. Tonight, we want to talk about five things that you will need, five things 
that you will need as you spend time in your daily devotion. Number one, your Bible. It is the only book in the universe that God provided, promised to inspire, that God inspired. Number two, you will need a pen because the Holy Spirit is going to tell you to underline things that he will make available to you. We'll show you. Number three, you will need to have a journal because you want to take notes on all what the Lord says. And this will give you wisdom beyond your lifetime. Number four, you will need to have a reading plan, step by step, book by book, chapter by chapter, so that it gives you an appreciation and understanding that you have a chronological way of reading in your devotional time with God. Number five, you will need to have your daily planner because when you are reading the Bible, things will pop up in your mind to write. And so it's important that a daily planner be available to you so that uh, you, can, you can make notes, you can write what the Lord says, what the Holy Spirit says to you. And uh, so it will help you every single day. When you delight yourself in the Lord, when you delight yourself also in God's word, you'll realize the following that the Bible is the only inspired book. The Bible is the only book where all the divine mentors are present. God promises specifically to bless the readers of the Bible that the Bible is the only book that will live forever, delighting in God's word. And uh, I know we're moving very quickly, but we have come to this important part where um, the university of the Holy Spirit because my friends, for all of us, this task is a great task. It is a challenging task. It is a huge task. And uh, none of us can do this on our own because this is not a process. Um, the invitation is ours to accept or deny, but Certainly, for all of us this evening, all of us that are mentors, all of us that are leaders, we need to come to the University of the Holy Spirit where we will be taught, where we will be guided, where we will be led, where we will be counseled to do this great task for the Lord. Mentorship. And uh, as we come to this part where we will consolidate, I, we are going to be looking at Philippians chapter one to three. And uh, I would like to have three volunteers to read one chapter each. 
And uh, after we would have read through um, these chapters, we are going to be breaking in our in our groups, in our rooms, and uh, we're going to be we're going to discuss. But but we want to read we want to read um, chapter Philippians one, two and three, and I'm going to ask three volunteers any any volunteers tonight to take one chapter at a time. Chapter one. I'll do chapter two, Rev. Yes. And somebody else? All of it will do chapter three. All right. I'm so glad that we have we have um, uh, the support. So we can go right ahead and read it. Philippians chapter one. Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, in as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bubbles of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise but I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened to me have fallen out rather the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bond, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bond, but the other of love, knowledge, of love, knowledge that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For yes, I know, uh, yes, continue. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also, Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live 
is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your forerunners and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same which ye see in me, and now here to be in me. Be before our second reader, I, I want you to ask God, as we're reading together, to reveal to you from this section, from this scripture, some things that, that uh, you need to hear as we read um, and as we ponder upon these words, ask God to, to reveal things to you. Chapter two. Yes. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any following of the spirit, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, believing of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but with lowliness of mind, let each other esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made to the likeness of men and being found in fashion of a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death on the cross wherefore god also had highly esteemed him exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus Every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god's for it is god which worketh us worketh in us 
in you both to will and to do of his great pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and deputating, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of all crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the rod of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labor in vain. Yea, and if I offer upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to us shortly, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded when will naturally cure, care for your state. For in all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But ye know the proof of the of him that as a son with a father, he had served with me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see him, see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Iperedus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants, for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the, the more carefully that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. Rejoice, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Chapter yeah. three. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you, to me. Indeed, it is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me that I counted loss for Christ? 
yea, doubtless. And I count all the things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win in Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is true the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfortable into, unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow if that I may appreciate in that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything, he be otherwise minded. God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as he have us for an example. For many work of him, I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that they may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work in way by his able, even to subdue all things unto himself. Thank you so much, uh, sister, and thanks for all those who volunteer. What we are going to do now is we are going to break up in our rooms, in our groups, and the Reverend Julie will help us um, to do that. And uh, in that in that time, we'll take 20 minutes and we will journal through these um, passages of scripture that we've read. Um, and uh, I, I want to ask you, um, write down which portion of scripture spoke to you. It could be verse, one verse, it could be several verses, just write them down. And uh, we will use the four things that are available to us, scripture, observation, application, prayer. What is it that you observe in this verse or verses? Application, what it is that you have learned from this verse or verses? How does it apply to your life today? And what would you pray for considering what you have learned from the scripture. And we're going to come back together as a group and report what it is that the Lord said to you through the passage and give an opportunity for each person, we'll give an opportunity for each person to report. So I want to hand you over to Reverend Julie at this time. To, uh, just to clarify with the breakout groups, are they just journaling or are they sharing those aspects? Yes, when, when we return, we will, they will share in their group. Okay. And uh, when we return, we will we'll ask some volunteer to share um, together. Okay. So as, as you share in your groups, you can also journal when other people are, are speaking as well, but make sure that everyone has a chance. There's seven or eight people in each group, unless people have been kicked off and back on, that might be an issue. Um, a lot of times it's helpful in these groups if someone can step up as a leader. We're all leaders here, every single person. You wouldn't be here if you weren't a leader. So if someone can maybe des designate themselves or volunteer as a leader to make sure that everyone has a chance to speak, 
Uh, that way the 20 minutes isn't used up by only one person. Uh, make sure that everyone has a chance. All right, you should be sent automatically, but if you aren't sent to your breakout rooms, um, you will be sent, you, you will stay here in the front screen and I will make sure that you get into your group. All right, here you go. Well, thank you for your time. Our group has had a wonderful time together. And I'm sure, I'm sure you are blessed through this, this group, grouping thing together, looking at the scripture and talking. And but 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 I want to give I want to give volunteers an opportunity to talk to us on on these four principles uh, how we Bible study how we read our Bible, um, give us a little report so we'll understand and everyone else will learn from each other as to um, what, what, what we've learned through reading the scripture this evening. Any volunteer? Well, let, let me let me go since anybody's not going and it's always good to uh, pick up the slack because my brother's asked for a volunteer as I the first thing I observed was that when the scripture was read and I and if I didn't have my Bible in front of me following actually all of it most of it almost all of it went over my head and so when I actually picked up the Bible because when the reading started I remember when Rick started to read and I recognize, yeah, I hear the verse, but it's only when I actually saw it for myself that it actually began to become more just, uh, relevant and, and relatable. So seeing it actually was important for me as a first observation. And the second thing I, as it was going, I was going through the scripture, uh, verse Philippians 2, verse 13 and 15 stood out to me. Let um, me just read those three verses. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. So I, I wrote, I, I journal, I, I, I wrote down my stuff there, because this is a part that I don't generally do, so I'm learning to do this now. So I wrote down this. I'll read what I wrote. It's not too personal, so I can read it. Um, as a DS, God spoke to me that it, it is he that is working in me and not me working for him. <laughs> That's what God said to me. The Amen. Verse. It is he Amen. that is working in me and not me working for him. Very often I keep saying I work for the Lord. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, the scripture reminded me, reverse your thinking. The second thing I wrote down here, uh, I must do all things without worrying, without murmuring, sorry. The word A-L-L, all, uh, my pastor of report, I like to uh, emphasize, I remember his preaching, you would pull out one word and preach on it. One word, all, do all things without murmuring and disputing. 
So one word I observe changed the whole scenario. Not do things without, do all things. And the third thing finally is, if I listen to this God who is working in me and not me working for God, and I don't murmur, and I do everything without, all things without murmuring, then I will be qualified as a blameless and harmless son of God. A blameless and a harmless son of God. Amen. For that I can pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Amen. Another volunteer. Thank you, Reverend Altar. I don't have to say anything now. That was my verse. <laughs> Was saying, great, you know, God spoke to me. I saw it as, as a BS, and what you guys see, we tell you, you know. <laughs> Don't worry, he said the same things to me because I am the same way. I try to do, I know I cannot do all the things without grumbling. So that's what he's working on me with until now because my mouth is a danger to me. Amen. Some other volunteer, please. Okay. Um, I want to share chapter 1, verse 6. And this verse um, has helped me over the years um, as a young believer, using it as a form of encouragement, you know, um, many times when you, you feel discouraged and feel like, okay, that things are not going your way and all that, that verse, I would use it to encourage myself because it says, um, being confident that he, God, who started the work in me is able to bring it to completion or able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I know sometimes you feel that, um, man, this thing is my work and my work. But the voice remind me, is not my work. It's God started working me. And the work that he started, he's able to complete it. And so Amen. Um, I am blessed and I am, I've encouraged myself and encouraged others with the, the very verse. Praise the Lord. I just wish to share this evening. Um, one verse has impacted me. There are many verses, but I chose to share this one. Um, verse 14 of chapter 3, which says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And the message that, that came here is that this thing it's not going to happen by magic. It will take some sacrifices. It will take some effort. It will take deliberate actions on my part to be where God would have me to be as his child. Amen. We'll take a couple of volunteers more. Chapter two. Chapter two. Um, verses 6 to 8 really touch me. It's, and it says, um, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross you know sometimes it is not an easy thing thing to be humble in different situation it's it's sometimes hard to humble ourselves. But if Christ can do it and we are follow of Christ, we have to be servant-like. 
And that really spoke to me that if Christ could do that, then I can do it too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, the verse that stood out, well, one of the verse that stood out for me, it's chapter one, verse 27, that says, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you are only here, I will be able to stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. And as I read that, um, it, it highlighted that, you know, as believers, sometimes when we're together, it is so easy to behave in an orderly and an appropriate manner and godly. But when you're outside of that gr normal group, um, you can easily get carried away. And so God is reminding us that no matter in what environment, what circumstance or situation we may be facing, to know that we represent the gospel of Christ and we are the feet that will carry the gospel and we are the, the, the vessel that will be used. And so we always need to be mindful of that and to remember that people are looking on at us and that, um, you know, the way we behave, we represent Christ. So we need to be very careful. And as persons who are about us or see how we behave, they will know whether we are in form spirit so i like the idea of standing form in one spirit which says that you know we reflect christ so we need to be very careful of how we carry ourselves amen 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 um good evening good evening sir i the two verses that i uh, thought that really um struck me was were, were rather um, Philippians 3 verses 15 and 16. Uh, it talks about those of us, let those of us who are um, mature uh, have this, uh, sorry, be of the same mind. And uh, I'm trying to read it, the, the, the writing is a bit, uh, therefore let us, as many as are mature, um, have this mind. And if in anything we think otherwise, you think otherwise, God will reveal this unto you. And then it went on to say, nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us work by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Now, uh, a couple months ago, I was speaking with someone and they were asking me about something that a Nazarene did some part. I can't remember which country at the time we were talking about. So I said, well, I know if the person is a Nazarene, uh, then uh, he would, I, I believe he would be thinking a certain way and will be, will be doing things in a certain way, right? So I, I would suspect that whatever whatever was done was done in accordance with, with God's will, according with God's word and according to the direction of the Holy Spirit. And so this is this is this is this really struck me that all of us here, um, particularly those of us who are supposed to be mature in the Lord, should be of the same mind and of the same spirit and um, mm. and uh, and work and work by the same rule, right? And, and so that is a fantastic revelation um, that, that, that just occurred to me over the past couple of minutes here. And, um, and I suppose even this training here is preparing us to be of the same mind, right? To, 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 to think the same way. So wherever we are in this part of the world, in whatever district, village, um, our responses to situations ought to be directed by the Holy Spirit and therefore will be of the same mind um, particularly if we have the same training and background. Thank you. Amen, brother. Good night, everyone. Sister Joyce Phillips from Tuesday Church. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verses 6. 
being confident of the very thing that he who had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so this scripture has jumped out to me to say that once you have studied the word of God diligently without faith, wavering in your faith, and you would have performed the task that was given to you diligently, that God will add all the reward to you. He will continue to let you shine in whatever you do. And that will not stop because you will continue to perform the good work that he started in you. Amen. Good night, brothers and sisters. This is a verse that has always been in my mind and sometimes a bit troubling. So I don't know if this will trouble some others, but in chapter 2, verse 12, the end part of it says, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It tells me that in spite of being in the church and having good brothers and sisters and pastors helping us, mentoring us, each person has the duty, the responsibility to work out his or her own salvation, hopefully not with fear and trembling, but the word says with fear and trembling. Amen. Hello? 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 Yes, yes, can hear you. You can hear me? Yes, sir. I'm Reverend Deadly speaking. Thank you, Reverend. You yes, I'm speak. To, I was trying to get on to you, but I probably have some technical difficulties and I'm not capable of fixing it. I don't have the technician at that. But I was unable to be in the chat rooms also because of that. But I made some observation about this portion of scripture that we were reading. And we're trying to get an understanding as to what God is saying to us through it. And I was looking at the first verse in the Philippians 1, where Paul was writing to the church. And he was giving us what is called, I call his position. What was his position in the church and in Christ? And that struck me because Paul says here, in, as he's writing, Paul and Timotheus serve servants of Jesus Christ. And that word servant came out to me and I delve into it and I go back into some other chapters. And then I noticed in chapter two of Philippians, verse five, he's speaking, let this mind be in you, which, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no repetition and took upon him the form of a servant. That word comes up here again. Then if you look in chapter three, you will notice that Paul is speaking. He speak, when he's speaking there in those two chapters and verses, he's speaking of his present position in Christ. But now he's speaking of who he was in chapter three, mm -hmm. verse five. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew. He's giving his, his, his previous designations as, as, as a, a religious man. But then he comes down to all of that, say in verse seven. But what things were gained to me, those things I counted for loss. So to my mind, Paul is saying that our position, we need to recognize as we seek to pursue in being mentors, we need to recognize where we really stand. What is our true position in Christ? Are we servants? And if not, we need to find ourselves in that position because from that perspective, we will have what is called the spirit of Christ, the mind of Christ, and the humility that we all, Amen. We all seek, the humility that we all seek to have. The humility doesn't come from us. It is our position in Christ that gives us that humility. 
so that we can become like servants to be able to in, in, enjoin ourselves with people so as to mentor them in spite of what we see about them. So to my mind, our position in Christ, we need to, to formally establish who we are in Christ. Are we servants? Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Are there any other volunteer? All right. I, I want to thank you so much for your participation and your contribution. And I am sure when I just would like to let you know that while I was um, in sermon preparation classes, um, these were the very mm -hmm. things that, yes. Oh, could I say something? Yes, go right ahead. Yes. Um, I want to make an observation that um, in the book of Philippians, that the word joy and rejoice was mentioned 16 times. Mm -hmm. And it, it really struck me because um, Paul was writing from prison and he was talking about joy and rejoice. That's what I make that observation. Very good observation. Thank you. If I close before we go to the next um, page, um, do we have any other contribution? Anybody would like to, to share? All right. Yes, good night. Good night. I'm Sister Ingrid from Oriola Church. Oh, wonderful. Yes, it is a joy to um, be able to join with um, the others on this wonderful evening. Um, a verse or two verses that stood out um, to us, I should say, because there are three of us here um, joining the session this evening. Mm -hmm. I would like to make mention of um, Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. And it says, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. And it continues. And I would like to remind us that um, Paul, just like in this um, same situation that we are in right now, he was a, a mentor to the church at Philippi. Philippi. And he had his, he was sending this message, not only to um, it, it was to all included, the leaders as well as the other members in the church. And so to each one of us as leaders in the Church of the Nazarene, let's take note of this, that Paul was reminding the church then and reminding us now that we are to be like Christ. And he was the, he is the light of the world. And so we, as the children of God, must become um, light and ensure that our light is shining brightly because the world depends on us. And in this depraved generation, this dark world that we are living in, we must shine like lights in this dark world by living um, in the same example that was left by Christ and taking note of all the, um, the different reminders that Paul was giving to the church that we should not be, I would like to um, take, um, you back into a Guyanese um, term, when the cat's away, the mouse will play. Let's not be like that. And um, say, even in the absence of Paul, he was telling the church that they should continue doing the good work. And even in the absence of not um, having Paul here or not having um, the regular church services that we're having, we were accustomed to, and we are separated um, physically. We must ensure that in um, we must still be united as the body of Christ and still recognize that we are part of the body of Christ and we must continue to shine as bright light. So it must be an, a continuous effort, continuing like what it says in the, um, the verse um, 12, which says we must continue to work out, right? Continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So it means that it is a continuous process, never ending until the return of Christ. We must continue to shine. So I encourage everyone to um, continue to do their part 
in whatever role Christ has placed us in the, in his body as a church, whatever is our role, let us continue to do it diligently. And um, it is only through faith in Christ and through following the examples laid out in scriptures that we can continue to abide in Christ and allow his word to abide in us so that we can continue to um, be successful um, children of God, bright lights in this um, we can continue to shine like lights in a dark world. That's all for, for our observations. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sister Ingrid, all the way from Oriala. What a pleasure to have you on this, our program tonight. Um, before, before we finally, finally conclude, I um, want to give you last opportunity if there is anyone who would like to, I know your heart has been prompt and you want to, um, I want to give you a last opportunity to do so. I would like to share from chapter 3 and verse, verse 14, where it says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall God shall reveal this, even this unto you. It's saying that let us let us focus on our goal, our purpose that God has placed us here for. Let us um let us put our mind upon the things of God, regardless of our situation, regardless of the circumstances and things that we have to face in life. We must put our eyes upon Jesus who is the art and finisher of our faith. We must not give up. We must look Amen. to him in every situation. We Amen. must continue. We will tell you not, this race is not for the swift, but for those who endure it. So regardless of the ups and downs, we must go on serving God and do the thing that he wants us to do. So I'm Amen. saying that let us be mature, let us grow up as Christian as, as believer and let us let us seek to go on to move up forward with him and in, 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 in to be in his perfect will. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sister. And thank you, Reverend Altar. I've seen your hands up. You know, one thing that I recognize and I listen to my brothers and my sisters, I question I want to ask the question, did anybody write down the things you said? No. It's so easy to speak, but we don't write. And that was one of the challenge, I think, of the Dr. Somburg. She wrote extensively in her blog. And I think what I observe, and I want to say, even as a leader and a mentor, as I will teach others, it would be wrong for me to talk to them about taking pen and paper and observing and writing, and I'm not doing it. And so I want to before you close, Reverend Nagamutu, say that it's so easy to oh, speak and talk and talk and talk. But this is alone time stuff you're doing here. You don't got no way to talk to really. Uh, this is devotion you, we, we're doing here, reading the scripture, observing the scripture. And then, and you did mention in your presentation, Reverend Nagamutu, of you must have a notepad and you must have. So I, I wish, I really pray that as a pastor myself and as a mentor that I will start practicing. And I started doing that. I, as a matter of fact, I, since Dr. Somberg did her presentation, I am attempting, I'm not perfect. I haven't gotten it completely right, <laughs> but I'm <laughs> writing now my thoughts. And that's so important, not just reading the, the, the thought, writing down the thoughts. So that's the contribution before you go. I want to say to all, I, I listened to some excellent comments, but I was just wondering, did you write down those things? If you wrote it down, wow, that would have been great. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend, Reverend Otar. As we wind down, I, there are some questions I really would like us to ponder this evening. What do you feel that you have learned from this lesson um, that, that will impact your life? today and how has what you have learned applied to your ministry situation? I wanna share a video with you and my technical personnel is working on that. 
hopefully she can get that. But before, before I do that, I want to encourage you. I want to let you know that as a mentor, that we ought to spend some quality time with our mentee. And for the next 30 days, if we can practice um, these four things as we mentor and uh, we spend time together with those who are mentoring, if we can practice these four things, I'm sure. Um, and then if we ask God to help us um, to put it into practice in our life, I'm sure that we are going to be tremendously blessed. Listen to this little clip. Hi, this is Don Howe, and the topic for this golden nugget is mentoring. Socrates mentored Plato. Plato mentored Aristotle. Aristotle mentored Alexander the Great and Alexander the Great almost conquered the whole world. Mentoring is basically training or discipling others, and anyone can be a mentor. You don't need to be perfect in order to be an effective mentor. As a mentor, you'll teach both skills and character. Skills are usually taught intentionally, while character is usually caught or taught unintentionally. You should only mentor a person who is ready, willing, and able to grow. I like to say, look for a fat person, F-A-T. That stands for faithful, available, and teachable. Effective mentoring requires a customized growth plan that fits the individual and both the mentor and the one being mentored should be on a personal growth program. When you're mentoring and you want to teach a specific task, there's a four step process that you should follow. Number one, I do the task you watch and learn. Number two, we do the task together. Number three, you do the task and I watch and I offer feedback. And number four, you do the task. That's how How Insurance Services has designed their mentoring program. In order to be a good mentor, You've got to expect results. The key to exponential growth is to make sure that you don't just mentor anyone. If you want to grow exponentially, make sure that you mentor someone who will in turn mentor others. If you want to be successful, you've got to be teachable. You've got to be a lifelong learner. Do you read good books? Do you listen to good audio? Do you observe what's happening around you? Do you take good notes? Do you write down the thoughts that you have? One of the keys to learning is to not write down what the teacher says, but to write down the thoughts that you have while the teacher is speaking. In other words, Take what the teacher is saying and figure out how to apply it to your own life. I expect you to take notes. As you listen to these gold nuggets, I expect you to write down any thoughts that might come to your mind and I expect you to grow. This is because I believe that you are a winner and given enough time, you will win. Yes, you are a winner. Amen. We are all winner in this mentorship process. And I want to encourage you as we close 
that we continue to do what we have started. And I want to thank all those who participated today. I want to thank our technical person. I want to thank um, Reverend Ota. I want to thank Reverend Julie. Reverend Ota, Reverend Julie, you've been wonderful today in helping to put this presentation together. I want to thank Sister Shalini, who has been very, very instrumental. And uh, she is she is uh, wonderful in what she's doing. I want to thank you. And uh, now I want to hand you back over to Reverend Ota. Surely we have been blessed by the presentation by Reverend Abraham Nagmud and they continue to ask Reverend as you teach. And I know for, for sure that you are mentoring many. The, the track record is there and you'll continue to do that. It's now 8.17 and I think we are expected to go later at 8.30. Am I right, so Julia, are we, are, are, are we going past our time? Just have a check from Sister Julia. 8.30 was the time. 8.30. 8.30. So we have just about 12 minutes for if there's any question or any a thought, a question or a quick thought. Uh, don't go into too much elaboration on what you have seen. By the way, I love the, uh, the, the ending video there. Excellent point. I like how that, was, that finished off there. Amen. So, go ahead. Any question or a short thought that you may have as we close off this session on biblical mentorship. Hi, Pastor Outer. Go ahead, sir. A great lesson for pastors. In that last video, I will never forget what a fat person is. <laughs> a faithful, available, and teachable. You can speak so much, but you, you have to have the ability to make people remember certain things. In as much as you like to say, a short pencil is better than a, a long memory. That man has made my memory very good. Fat. I will not forget that. Thank you, Brother John. <laughs> Anyone else? Question or a quick comment? Reverend Altar, I would love to hear that video again. I would really love to hear it. Can I have it somewhere or the other that I can look at it one more time? Absolutely. I think Reverend Agbutu can make it available. Shalini can make it available. Um, 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 they can give you a link maybe where you can find it. Reverend Agbutu? Yes, I will have uh, Ms. Shalini forward that to everyone. All right. So if you thank if, you very much, Rev. Amen. I wish to I wish to go back and watch that again. That was so wonderful. <laughs> and like Brother John said, you know, I have to look for some fat people. <laughs> Brother John, you like that, right? <laughs> it's so memorable. Yes. <laughs> Someone else. Anybody else with a question on tonight's? Uh, praise the Lord. Well, there are no question. Shalini, let's close off with our video one more time for reinforcement and then we'll pray. We'll repeat the video for a second time and then we can pray and close. And I'm gonna ask someone from the Demerar district, uh, someone who is willing to uh, pray for us. So who's willing to pray for us from the Demerar district before we have the video. So as soon as the video ends, we can get that person to pray. Who is volunteering? Amen. I haven't seen anybody. The Reverend Clifford Zamet, you're there. You're hearing me? You're going to close us in prayer, sir, at the end of this yeah. video. At the end of this video, we're going to call upon you to close us in prayer. Everybody, take a good look again and, and enjoy this short video. And after that, we will be wrapping. Wrap <laughs>
is based on... Okay, thank you, Reverend. And over to the Reverend uh, Clifford Zamet for our closing prayer and blessing. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for how good it is when we can get together, even though we are far apart yet. It's just that we are in the same room where we can hear each other. We are inspired by your words. My prayer tonight, O God, is that even as we come to the close, we can reflect and that what we would have heard will be so in our minds. Think of that little acronym that helps us to, to remember that we must first be faithful, available, and, and teachable. And so we thank you tonight, O oh God, that as we leave here, we're going to leave inspired and informed. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In the next three minutes that we have, are there any prayer requests for our intercessory ministry teams? We have both district have intercessory ministry teams. Quickly, if you have a request, share it here. And our teams are right here. So the Nicola from the Demar side, Sister Rebecca from the Burby side. Anybody with any prayer requests, quickly share that so we can. Or you yes, can... For, for the pastor's family who was brutally killed on Sunday last, the Farley's family. The Farley's family. Okay. He lost a pastor. Yes, he's a pastor. Okay. And he had a medical accident last Sunday. Died on the spot. His yeah, leg was severed. Okay. His wife, Thank you for that. We will keep it. Far... Is it the Farley's family? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. His name Anybody is else? Okeji Farley. Repeat, please. Okeji Farley. Okeji Farley. Yeah. Uh, okay, anyone else? Yes, Good evening. Um, okay. I did, I did um, request prayer early today. Um, Sister Grace accompanied me when I was going. And um, we also found out that she needs to, she's in need of prayer. She ha would have to have a process done as well. And um, so we, we request in prayer, the Samit family request in prayer. We request in prayer for a church or building product or building project as well. We request okay. in prayer. Thank you very Thank much. You Please remember the Samit family as you have heard. Anyone else? Good evening. Good Could evening. we kindly pray for Sister Barnwell, Hilda Barnwell, who lost her youngest brother this morning? She's in this group right now. Okay, I will ask our superintendent to pray before we go from the from the group. Anyone else? Thank you. So, so Wahida, we I see you're talking, but we're not hearing you. All right. I think this we all right. Thank you so much for those who are, and please send those requests to Sister Nicola Reed and uh, to Rebecca Bentick. We have ongoing intercessory ministry teams that are praying on both districts. Reverend Alpha Supporter, would you please pray as was requested for Sister Hilda and as God would lead you? Over to you, sir. Father, we pray for these families for whom death has come very close to them. And I pray God that you will bring comfort and strength and healing on the inside. Pray for Sister Barnwell and her family, oh God, that in these days they'll be able to lift their eyes to the hills from whence come at the yes, They will know yes, that the help yes. comes from God himself. So touch them, oh yes. God, and help them, I pray. I pray for the Farley's family and the church family that has yes. lost their, their shepherd and that entire yes. gospel crusaders ministry. I pray, God, that you will help them, that they too will lift their eyes to you and draw strength and hope, oh God, that, that we sorrow not without hope, but that there is hope in Christ Jesus. Minister to the Far East family, oh God, and help them, I pray. We continue to pray for Joe Morgan, that you will yes, yes. strengthen him and touch him and help him in yes. these days. He goes yes. back home now to a very empty house. Mm. I pray, God, that you will be with him even in these times. 
And then God, as we retire for the night and go to bed, go be with us and watch over us and keep us, I pray. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Receive the blessing of the man of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. And may you have a great rest as he prayed for us. God bless you all. Thank you all. So Julie, over to you for final wrapping up. All is well. Uh, oh. Remember the homework. Uh, last month, the homework was to find a mentor uh, to mentor you and to also find someone to mentor. So if you have not uh, chosen or, or prayed about that, definitely do that. And this month's emphasis was the content. So what are we to share with our mentees and mentor? And thank you so much for the presenters on Tuesday and today um, that very well um, presented the content, biblical mentorship, uh, and to follow along this SOAP devotional with our mentees uh, through Zoom, through text, through WhatsApp. We're seeing it all across the different districts. We're finding creative ways to do this devotional, not only ourselves, we have to be able to do it ourselves before we can ask someone else to do it, but to do it with them as well. So I, that's the homework for this month is to uh, do the SOAP devotional personally and also with your mentee. So that's, that's all the announcements we have for the homework. God bless you all and have a great and wonderful night. Thank you, Reverend Agmutu, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. Received it well. Blessings. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.